What have you done? Vicar Larrabee? What happened? Demon! Hell Scourge! Son of Perdition! Vicar! <laughs> Vicar! Jonathan's no demon. He's just a soul. Returned from the dead. Like your Christ, Vicar. Mary. Is it really you? Oh, it's me, all right. Precious brother. What is Mother doing here? I'm gathering the family for a final reunion. All smiling, all dead. Thanks to the good Dr. Reed. Mary. Mother, say hello to your son. Hello, Jonathan. Mother, I... What do we have here, Mother? The prodigal son has lost his tongue. Our Jonathan always had the first and last word at dinner. The entertainer, the star of our show. I'm sorry. Let me explain. Shut up. It's my turn to do the talking. I have this nasty hole in my chest, Johnny. It needs to breathe. Of course. You can speak. My prayers went so long without an answer. My husband killed in France. My child carried away by the flu. My brother promising to return in his letters, then disappearing in thin air. I went from hospital to hospital, cemetery to cemetery, grave to grave. I've lifted every stone in London, searching for an end to the nightmare. And there you were, in front of me, on a dark pier. The hunger had taken me. The joy to have finally found you. I longed for your arms, a final happy ending to so much tragedy, to tell me all would be well again, as you did when we were children. <laughs> it was this filthy dock where you greeted your sister. I dug. A tunnel from my grave with my fingers and teeth! Mary. I thought I had murdered you. I tried to end myself. We've been through the same horror. We are a disease, Jonathan. A sickness that corrupts all it touches. All we kiss, and all we kill. Look at me. Admire your ilk. I'm so sorry. Apologies will not suffice. I demand reparation. I want a miracle. Are you a miracle worker, Dr. Reed? No? <laughs> I'll show you mine then. The family Reed. Reunited and complete. Living forever in a red sea of eternal love. Time to go, Mother. Say hello to my son for Mary, me. wait. I have made friends with vital knowledge. Vampires. We are not alone, Mary. With time, we can learn to live almost as we lived before. How long? What? How long will this masquerade continue? I've been watching you. All these knights in Whitechapel pretending you're still a doctor. You believe you're just fighting a disease. But it's you, the disease. Jonathan, you! I'm a scientist. I'll find a solution. Let our mother go, please. You're always the one to sway me to reason, Jonathan. But before, your motivations were always pure. Now you're tainted. Let her go! She has no part to play in this. <sighs> Very well. Have you heard our good doctor? You can go home, mother. Go home and rest in peace. Yes, I'll go home and rest. <laughs> it's so easy to make them obey or forget puppets for our pleasure. I've seen you have your fun. You are mad. <laughs> So that's what I am, Doctor. Mad. I was beginning to wonder. I I've been hearing these voices in my head. One in particular. That of my dead brother. 
This is the reason I must kill you. Not for your betrayal. Not for our poisonous kiss. Not even for the lies you tell yourself. No. It's so that smooth and wicked voice will stop ringing in my ear. <clears throat> Mary. No, don't! Time to die, brother. And this time for good. Assassin! Ah! Ah! Kiss me again, sweet brother. Abomination! Come to me, Jonathan. You left me to rot! What have you done? Kill him. Revel in your true nature. You've killed me, brother! Come to me, Jonathan. Sean Hampton, don't expect the same mercy from me! Rest in peace, monster.
face me again, sweet brother. in peace, monster. It's time to bring this conversation to an end. Forever. You know I will not play this game. Calm now, Doctor. Like a rabid dog. Or think you're performing an autopsy. Don't be ridiculous. I'll kill them all. The kind Dr. Swansea. The sweet little lass with hair of red. I am the Harbinger, bringing your punishment. Mary... Don't you see? This is not me. Flesh that never ages. All nightmare, no dream. Bring it to a close. Let me sleep. I will find a cure, Mary. I swear it. Then, at last, I can forgive you. for my fallen sister. I realize the entire world now revolves around this singular word. The epidemic that has stricken London is not the Spanish flu. It is transmitted through the blood via violent biting, turning survivors into frenzied immortals. I am Dr. Jonathan Reed. I am a vampire, born anew into an age of death and pestilence. While plotting factions close in around me, I am sworn to find the source of this epidemic. I am convinced greater perils are still to come. I know the answers I seek are hiding in our blood. Jonathan, old chap, how are you tonight? I've seen little of you of late. I was conducting research in my room, away from the nightly routines. Of course, of course. Worry not, I understand. The situation has been testy around here. I won't deny it, but we still stand. What news do you bring? The news is not good, my friend. We try to keep the epidemic at bay, but street violence is escalating quickly. How bad is the epidemic? It is killing the infected patients faster. 
In less than two days now. The only blessing is that they are contagious for a shorter period. Tell me more about the violence. Geoffrey McCallum seems to have sent his war dogs on a hunt. On a nightly basis, Prewen patrols exterminate every skull and vampire they find. Have they come closer to the hospital? No. They mainly focus on fallen districts or abandoned buildings. But they're growing in numbers. They must be recruiting heavily. I have received an alarming letter from Lady Ashbury. She wants me to meet her at her house. I have been granted safe passage. Then you are twice fortunate. I have never been invited to the Lady's Mansion. And with the quarantine and controls, city access is nigh impossible. Is the quarantine serving any purpose? It is helping slow the propagation of the epidemic. But as long as we have no clue to its origin, its efficiency is limited. Why have you never entered the lady's house? You are one of her good friends, are you not? My dear Jonathan, you have no idea how reclusive the good lady normally is, nor in what great esteem she must hold you to let you into her domain. Have you any reliable friends in the West End who might assist me? Unfortunately, you will be alone. Except for our ravishing red-headed acquaintance, of course. What about the Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stole? Where are they? There are only a few of us, and most others would not speak to you. I am the black sheep of our brotherly flock, you know. What of my commission here at Pembroke Hospital? Nothing to fear, Jonathan. Your position here is in no jeopardy. You remain one of us, and you are always most welcome. Thank you, Edgar. We shall speak again later. Oh my god! 
Have you heard anything about Sean Hampton's shelter? It used to be a safe place. I'm not sure that's the case anymore. Are you worried about the conditions in London? I I've heard rumours about some sort of militia patrolling, killing the sick. The wet boot boys are overrun. Do you need medical help, sir? Yeah, I do. If you can throw in some drugs, I can find use for that too. So you can sell them on the black market? Sorry, I'll only provide you with exactly what you need. Fair enough, Dr. Reed. Don't cost me nothing to ask. Goodbye, Mr. Digby. Then the Good evening, Miss Cox. Hello again, Dr. Reed. Have you got any news about Sean Hampton's shelter? Rumor has it he's died some sort of gang of his own. Soldiers of Christ, something like that. Are you worried about the sanitary situation in London? The bodies are piling up, but I'm not afraid. I'm still alive, and I intend to stay that way. Can I offer you my medical help, Miss Cox? Giving help for free? You'd make a poor businessman, Dr. Reed. Perhaps I would. Please, take this. You will feel better. Thank you. But don't expect me to owe you anything. It won't last forever. After, we'll have plenty of time to plan the future. Good thing we haven't seen Seymour for a while. Even Dyson has stopped coming in every night. The pub's become right peaceful, don't you think? You're still working at this hour. That's what I call dedication. Have you heard anything about Sean Hampton's shelter? Some customers said the sad saint had a vision. Launched himself on a holy crusade. <laughs> Even Dyson Delaney joined up with him. It's more like a cult, if you ask me. Are you worried about the sanitary situation? Of course I am. Everywhere's deserted. Houses, streets all empty. People buying guns. We hear them go off every night. It's bloody frightening. Do you require medical assistance, Miss Cavendish? Don't feel so good, if you have to know. I knew that keeping the bar open with the epidemic wasn't a good idea. Take this. It'll help. Perhaps you should think about closing the turquoise turtle for a while. Tom always said we got to keep the doors open. <clears throat> but thank you, Doctor. Problem is to solve one. Welcome back, Doctor. What can I do for you? Have you got any recent news on Sean Hampton's shelter? I've not seen him since he came back to the docks. <laughs> Rumour has it he's converted his flock to some sort of cult. That's unbelievable. Do you need any help? <coughs> Can't be good for business to see the bartender cough in your beer. Indeed. It would be a shame to taint the delicate taste. Oh, thank you, Dr. Reed. My customers and I, we all thank you. Are you concerned about the sanitary situation? It may surprise you, but I'm not. I've heard about the men at arms and the fights between gangs at night, but that's nothing new. I wish I shared your optimism. It's not optimism. Gangs have been fighting in this part of town since before I was born. This war will stop when enough blood has been spilled. Good evening, Mrs. Fishburne. May I come in, please? Of course, Dr. Reed. Please don't stay too long, sir. What can I do for you, Dr. Reed? Do you have any news about Sean Hampton's shelter? I heard you can't go there anymore unless you share his faith. A bit queer, don't you think? Aren't you worried about the conditions around here? Hate everywhere. The city will not sink because of this flu. It's the violence that will finish us all. Mrs. Fishburne, are you in need of any medical assistance? I am afraid I am, Doctor. I don't feel well at all. Then let me give you a prescription. I thank you for your generosity, sir. It's something this part of town truly needs. Evening, Rufus. Evening, Mr. Reed. Heard anything about Sean Hampton's shelter lately? I rarely go near there, but rumour has it the place is restricted. 
Only members chosen by Mr. Hampton are allowed in. Are you worried about the sanitary situation? I never really felt safe in this town anyway. Now's the first time that everyone seems to feel the same way as me. Is anything worrying you right now? Gunshots? I hear them every night. Who's firing? Who are they shooting at? That's what's scary. Good evening, Mr. Fishman. Yeah, yeah. Have you heard anything recently about Sean Hampton's shelter? Called into the hullabaloo that can be heard coming from the building, I would say that all the local loonies are at his precious club. Aren't you worried about the conditions here in London? I've heard armed men have started patrolling the city, even killing the sick to stop the epidemic. Starting to like this city again. Good evening, Mr. Fishman. Yeah, yeah. You trick me good, Doctor. Tell me, who will take the blame for your murders now that I'm dead? Good evening, Mr. Woodbeat. Good evening to you, my young Doctor. Do you have any recent news on Sean Hampton's shelter? I read that given enough time, any intention, no matter how good, can rot and sour. If half the things I've heard about this place are true, that theory is soundly proven. Are you worried about the sanitary situation in London? I never thought I'd live to see the last days of London. Just another thing I was wrong about, I suppose. Do you need my medical attention, sir? Unfortunately, yes. The spirit is willing, but the flesh, well, you know. Nobody is immune to disease. There is no need to be ashamed of that. Well, thank you, Doctor. Now maybe I'll live another day or two. Goodbye, sir. Good evening, Mr. Throgmorton. Dr. Reed, can I be of any assistance? Have you noticed anything suspicious lately? Have you heard any rumors regarding Sean Hampton's shelter? I cannot say I've heard anything particularly interesting, but I was too busy hunting evil to pay attention. Are you worried about the sanitary situation in London? It seems the guard of Prewen has declared war on vampires. I'm not sure if that's a good thing, though. Really? I thought you'd be thrilled by this news. The Guard can be reckless. They rush into a fight without thinking. The citizens of London should not be the collateral victims. Do you need my medical attention, sir? Actually, I may. In my line of work, I have to stop at any sign of infection. 
Treating a vampire hunter's wounds is certainly a first for me. I'm happy to help you, of course. Thank you, Dr. Reed. Your support means a lot. Goodbye, and good hunting, Mr. Throckmorton. Watch it! Is it?
I cannot enter. Good evening, Doctor. Can I help you? How are conditions in Whitechapel at the moment? I always thought it was my role to reveal what really happens in these forgotten parts of London. And you're not sure anymore? Emptied coffins. Cannibalism. Walking dead. I'm trying to report the truth about what's going on, but no one believes it anymore. Do you need assistance? That would be nice of you, Doctor. Who knows what I may have caught you in my investigation. If you persist in investigating the most pox-ridden boroughs of London, you must accept the risks. Thank you, sir. Pay me a bottle and I'll be nasty. Good evening, Christina. Change your mind, Mr. Reed? How are the conditions in Whitechapel these days? When I think about all the people who died trying to reach England, it seems we escaped a war just to die on foreign shores, hated by all. Do you need any assistance, Miss Popper? It depends on the price of your medicine. I am shocked that you would think I am that sort of man. Forgive my suspicion. I'm so used to liars with good manners. Thank you, sir. Fancy buying something, sir? You never lose your... How are the current conditions in Whitechapel? When there's more people outside at night than during the day, then you've got to start to worry. You again? What do you want this time? How is the sanitary situation in Whitechapel? I'm not easily scared, but crazy killers and armed patrols are lurking about. My son's right about this place. How did you become the local bully everyone is afraid of, Joe? There's no pride in roughing up poor bastards. But this is the only job I've found. And it pays well, too. A job? So you're racketeering for someone else? I got enlisted by the Wet Boot Boys, a gang from the docks. I'm their muscle for their dirty work. You survive at any cost, even at the expense of others. Perhaps that's just the law of nature. I don't care what you think, sir. I'll do what I have to do for my own reasons, and that's that. I'm not sure Mr. Lewis would agree with your by-all-means-necessary philosophy, sir. Oh, do you really think he's the poor victim here? Barrett can be as sneaky as anyone. Long ago, I even called the bastard my best friend. Joe Peterson. He's the villain here, isn't he? But you seem to know each other. I've known Joe for years. I saw him box once or twice. He was a friend then. But these days, he's just another thug. What can you tell me about Mr. Peterson? Besides his behavior toward you, obviously. Colossus Joe was a decent boxer. Good one, even. But after his wife passed away, he found every excuse to stop training. Just wanted to pick fights with everyone. It's never easy to find a new path in life. Especially after the loss of a loved one. But crime is certainly not the best option. We've all had some rough times, haven't we? But most of us don't use our fists to see us through. And no one has ever stood up to this thug. Nobody would be fool enough to stand against a wet boot, boy. What do you know of Harry Peterson? The boy seems so fragile. Not like his father at all. Harry's a good boy, but he spends most of his time complaining. He's had it tough, all right, but he needs to grow a pair. What troubles him, exactly? Well, despite being his father's son, almost everything, I think. He never wanted to come to Whitechapel in the first place. Hates this place more than most of us. Good evening, Harry. May I come in? Sure. Sure. Even my dreams are soaked with glue. So... May I ask you a few questions? I'm not bothered. What could be worse? Have you any recent news of Nurse Crane and her dispensary? Nobody dares to enter the dispensary now. Rumours say the nurse has gone mad. 
Do you need any medical help, young man? Yes, I do. I feel so tired. I don't know if it's the epidemic, but everything seems so hard. You'll feel better with this, but you need to get a grip. I'm not sure I'm happy with the idea of living long in a world like this. Your father and Mr. Lewis used to be good friends. What happened, Harry? I was young then. I don't remember Mr. Lewis ever coming back again after my mother died. Or was it after my father started bullying him? I don't know. Have you tried speaking to Mr. Lewis about it? I don't go out often, but yes. And he scolded me and told me to leave him alone. I guess my father frightens him too much. But you are not responsible for your father's actions. Am I not? Dad always says that he joined that gang for my safety. So if I wasn't born, people wouldn't be worrying about Colossus Joe. Have the money. How are conditions in Whitechapel these days? I hear gunshots every night. It's just like the war in the trenches, Doctor. I can't stand it. Good evening, my dear colleague. How is the sanitary situation evolving in Whitechapel these days? When people buy guns instead of medication, it means they have already traded hope for fear in their hearts. In my book, that's never a good thing, Doctor. Good evening, Mr. Petrescu. Surely you have someone else to bother, Mr. Doctor. How is the sanitary situation in Whitechapel? Terrible, to say the least. Maybe now you understand the importance of Dorothea's work here. But you never cared, did you? That's quite an accusation. Stop pretending, Mr. Doctor. All you wanted was to confront Dorothea. You never intended to help Whitechapel's people. There isn't just one way to help Whitechapel. Your way seems to attract sorrow and despair, Mr. Doctor. Your kind of care is not what Whitechapel needs. Tell me everything you know about Camellia, the mute florist. I do not believe in the afterlife, Doctor, but I'm almost convinced Camellia is an angel. She volunteered to give out our medical leaflets. Goodbye, Mr. Petrescu. Good evening, Xiao Shun. Wang Shang Hao, Dr. Reed. It's good to see you again. How is the sanitary situation evolving in Whitechapel these days? My only relief is that my Matthew died before seeing the madness that approaches. I'm afraid we won't survive this trial, Dr. Reed. How do you feel? Physically speaking, I mean. I don't feel good, Dr. Reed. Not at all. You should recover quickly after taking this. Thank you, Doctor. What are you doing with your time, now that you're back in Whitechapel? I've decided to help the poor and sick of the neighborhood by handing out medicine. That's very charitable of you. But why do it at night? I've noticed that the most desperate people tend to go out after dark. Hence my presence, to help them when I can. Giving out medicine? How can you afford to do that? I am a rich widow, Dr. Reed. My departed husband left me enough money to last the rest of my life. I can spend some on those who don't have any. Why don't you move to a better neighborhood? I thought about it, I confess. To go back to the same empty home every day still hurts me a lot. Why stay here, then? I am a woman of habit, Dr. Reed. And for now, I am happier being useful in a familiar place than I would be anywhere else. How do you feel now that you're back in Whitechapel? I've decided to follow your advice, sir. I won't forget the dead, but my efforts will be for the living. I've no doubt that is a wise and useful attitude in this part of town. To be completely honest with you, I am also doing this for myself. If I'm destined to survive this epidemic, I need my life to have some purpose. Do you still think about your departed husband? Of course I do. I'll never forget my beloved Matthew, but how do I put it? 
Now I miss him more than I want him back. I know what you mean. And I think it means you're getting better. Maybe death will take me the way it took Matthew. Without warning and without mercy. But until then, I live on. Hello again, miss. Tell me about Richard Nithercott. I understand he is quite fond of you, Camellia. Very well. Goodbye, then. Morbidity can breathe its own beauty and grace. Good evening, Mr. Nithercott. And good evening to you, too, my good sir. Can I be of any help? How is the sanitary situation evolving in Whitechapel these days? I imagine we are all part of some nightmare without beginning nor ending. If only the dreamer could awake. Do you need medical attention, sir? It may be wise to let you prescribe me something. I don't feel like I should. 